Glad to know you're still there and watching uh, The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Recently, it was said that um, the students in tertiary institutions, I mean the ones in, um, uh, by the government, run by the government, will have loan facility. So student loan, which is supposed to kick off in September. A lot of Nigerians have expressed concern over uh, what the requirements are before you can get the student's loan. But the ASU, that is the... Um, the, the body of lecturers that we know about in universities uh, said that uh, it is a trap, so to speak. And especially uh, the ASU president, uh, who is Professor Emmanuel Osodeke, kicked against it and said there was a trap somewhere and he was not comfortable with it. We're glad that this morning we have him in the studio. Oh, right. Joining us for this program today <laughs> to talk about his uh, misgivings about this uh, new student loans law that has been signed. And um, we're glad to have you. Good morning, Professor Osodeke, and welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Well, there were a lot of applause uh, from uh, very many quarters when uh, the president said he had signed this into law and they went ahead and said it will kick off in September. But you had reservations about this law. Tell us more about uh, why you had these uh, reservations. Thank you very much. What we said, you know, the press, what we said, what I said is very well clear. But for this law, ASU needs to get a copy of the law so that we can analyze it and then address the public. That is what I said. I also said that but if you are talking about student loan in general, that ASU does not support student loan. That's why in the state of our country today, that ASU does not support student loan. The reason be that in 1997, sorry, in 1972, a loan was established. People took loan, and many did not pay, and nothing happened. In 1993, in 1993, in 1993, the military set up the Green 50. They also established a student loan bank that didn't last for two years and it collapsed. And nobody got loan, and that's that is that is our that is our view on student loan, and they have been trying to push it during the last regime as part of our agreement with government, and we resisted it, and that is not part of our this thing. But if the parents are comfortable with it, if the students are comfortable with it, no, but what is what 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 that is go ahead. But for union, we believe in a country like like Nigeria today, it's better to look for alternative source of funding education than loan to students of the very poor in the system. Okay, let, let's... And let's there, there are alternatives that as a country, if we put our, our best brain together, we can generate a good alternative of funding education rather than the loan. Okay, but uh, the layman will just say, okay, I have opportunity to get money to get me through school, and that is through that loan. So why do you think, first of all, that this uh, loan facility that was... Uh, started in the 70s, they tried it again in the in the 90s. Why do you think it failed in the first place? That is the question you should ask the government. The second one failed because it was not given, the money was consumed. But the law is there and the, 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 the report of the committee was set up is there. The report is there. You can, you can look for it, you get it. Why did it fail? It's there. Okay, well, PTA, um, the national body of PTA, that's Parents Teachers Association, are also skeptical about this loan just as you are because they fear that it may lead to increase in school fees which they do not want and then uh, federal government announced last week that this tuesday um, a committee would be meeting as they set up a committee interministerial committee uh, by the government to fine-tune the student loan bill and ASU is part of that committee. Let me just read out some of the committees for our viewers. ASU is part of it. NLC is part of it. Uh, the Nigerian Bar Association, Vice Chancellor's Forum of Nigeria University, Rectors of Polytechnics, Provosts of Colleges of Education, the Minister of Education, Minister of Finance, amongst others, are going to be part of that meet, uh, are part of that committee that will be meeting on Tuesday. Uh, what do you look forward to as you meet on Tuesday to fine tune this? loan this bill well like i said we're not aware that we are there we're not consulted we are not berating nobody have told us no i won't give you a copy of the law 
So that is it. So as far as we're concerned, it's still, uh, it's still, uh, it's still just something in so, the air. But we have not been told, we have not consulted, and uh, we have not been written to now. So, and the, the copy of the law has not also been passed to us, so that we look at it com comprehensively. So ASU is totally in the problem. dark. That's what you're saying, from yes. what we can understand. ASU is totally we're, we're, in the dark. We were not told, we were not told we we're not going to be in that, in that committee. We have not been written to now. The copy of the law has not been sent to us. So we're in the dark. That's, that's, that's serious. Okay, you talked about, uh, uh, am I quoting you or somebody else, but there's this talk about the fact that right now there are no tuition fees paid in, uh, in schools, and this law will come with tuition fees. Make us understand more about that situation. Well, what I also say is that when I look at the copy of, that, of the law, the unsigned copy in the, in the social media, there is somewhere that this loan will be used solely for payment of tuition fee. That's what I saw. That's why I said we need to get the original copy, not whether that is correct or it's one of the social media news. When we get it, if it is true that the loan will be used solely for payment of tuition, as a president, there's no tuition in the Federal University. We mean there's something like that's not there. Wow. Well, I, I read a report that. Um the Permanent Secretary, Federal Ministry of Education, Andrew Adejo, uh, disclosed that higher uh, institutions cannot introduce tuition fees because they do not have that financial autonomy to do that. Is that correct? Please come again. That uh, the Permanent Secretary, Federal Ministry of Education, Andrew uh, Adejo, he disclosed that higher institutions do not have the right to increase tuition fee because they do not have the financial autonomy to do that. Well, I have not got that, but until we see, like we said, we need to see a copy of the law to see what indicates, what are the indices, how much is the cap, the highest a student can get and the lowest a student can get. We need to get all of them before we can really, and they have, we view it as a union. You know, we are a union of collective. We take decision collectively, not by individual, not by me as a president. We take collectively. So when we get it, we look at it, and then come with our view on it. That's my sight, but we have not got it. Okay, at least you've brought this angle that it's possible that whatever is on the social media may just be a copy that is not the true copy, certified true copy. Not, uh, when not you have, fine, yes. yes, when you have that one, maybe the conversation will change because you will have more information uh, to that regard. But you did say that um, if left for you, ASU and the other people, stakeholders, uh, um, alternative sources of funding universities should be sought for. Um, what are some of these alternative sources that you think that the Nigerian university can be funded from? Thank you. In 2018, when we were meeting with government on how to implement the agreement in 2018, a committee was set up to look for alternative sources of funding education in Nigeria and implementing our agreement with government. That committee was headed by Professor, Nimi, uh, Professor Musa Luigi Brede, and I was serving the committee. I came with a number of them. Some are being implemented today. Uh, example about this uh, um, stamp duty, we talked about um, having some fund from the federation account, online uh, first line charge. Uh, we talked about uh, um, this uh, bank charge, these charges you have on uh, um, on, on stamp duty. I would have, we came with a number of them. That if these ones are harvested, the way it was harvested for the issue of tech fund, then we would have solved most of this problem. But good enough, if that in the social media or this bill is uh, correct, there is also there is a good alternative to sourcing education, funding education, which is 1% of all the money collected from, by FIRS, collected by custom from mineral and what have you, if all these are harvested and put together and well managed, it will grow. It will grow just the way the tech fund is growing. When you enter any federal university today, state university, the, what you see is tech fund. So if this one is well used also, rather than using that as loan in a bank, let's put a technical team together that we ensure this money goes to the Nigerian educational system, federal teacher education, to ensure that it's well funded, not loan. Because even in those countries, U.S. is one of those who promoted this loan team before. But today, with the hardship, with the way those who took the loan are passing through, 
difficult period. The present president, Biden, is paying back the loan of some of those people who took those loans to relieve them. You can check, it's there, it's there in the news. So, to me, which means for where we can encourage Nigeria, encourage the children of the poor who don't have access to, to good sort of fund, who also not sure of getting unemployment rate in Nigeria is like three percent. In America, it's three point something percent. So, when we do student get loan? get enough money, get a good job, and pay the loan within two years as stipulated in that thing I see in the social media. So if that is the truth, it will be better to look for alternative sources. And if the federal government put this, uh, the, 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 consult the academia, put a strong thing together, just like we did in 1994, that was a tech fund, we would to get an alternative source that would generate funds to fund Nigeria University system, and then we will not encumbrance these children or the very poor, whose parents, like I said, it, uh, yesterday in less than a bag of rice in a month. All right, I am particularly concerned that ASU is not part of the, this, this discussion and highly uh, alarmed that you have said that if this interministerial committee that has been set up, which we have been told that ASU is part of, ASU has not been officially communicated. The meeting is supposed to be holding tomorrow. Today is Monday. What does this portend for this particular discussion and bill and indeed this the education system a sector in this administration and in answering that is it that there are factions in ASU because if ASU is there and then you as the president has not been informed do we take it that there are factions of ASU that might likely attend that meeting there is no faction in ASU we have one ASU solidly together we have not been I don't think any ASU, nobody has been written. And our address is well known. Does this have to do with the problem that have, that's going on between the federal government and ASU with regards to the strike that took place in, you know, well, now, last this year? New this new administration will have no single problem with them. They don't have any problem. If you, if you watch out, the person who tried to, uh, to see how the issue could have been resolved during the last administration is the present chief of staff. Even the present president also intervened. To, and the, 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 the then government refused. If you watch it, the chief of staff called on to number four, five. The president, sorry, um, yes, chief of staff called on to several meetings to ensure that this issue are resolved. So yeah, they are aware. So I don't think we don't have any single problem with this present regime. And we are waiting patiently on how we can meet with them and discuss and resolve all the issues. So I don't think we have a problem. Maybe but we don't know. We are still waiting. Okay, when you were talking about alternative measures to uh, fund education in Nigeria, you used a word, well-managed, you know, this money can be harvested, and if well-managed, in your opinion, what will constitute well-managed? Well, the, the, our own idea is that for you to be well-managed in Nigeria, as you have seen, that there have to be accountability, Stakeholders have to be present in a body that will manage that fund, like we did in need assessment, need assessment fund. If you watch that, the need assessment fund was taken by the Gulo Jonathan regime from Tet Fund. One year Tet Fund was taken from Gulo Jonathan, Jonathan era and go to the university to go and look at what we have done with that one year from Tet Fund compared to what Tet Fund had done over the past 30 something years. You see the difference because. In the need assessment fund, all the unions involved are part of how this money is spent at the university level, at the federal level. And that's why you see, but at the third fund today, it's opaque. So we believe that there is a need to have a committee, a, a team, if we agree, based on um, negotiation, then the money will be better spent and not what happened in 1972. Um, uh, loan or 1993 where bank and uh, what was it loan bank well as it stands the president has signed this bill into law and um, they're, they've set up this uh, interministerial committee they're going on with this how is ASU going to respond after tomorrow I still want to say that as far as concerned now we're not aware that we are on that team so when we are written and we have access to the bill our union, as a union, we meet, look at the bill, and then make a proper response. 
For now, what we are discussing, I just uh, we're just discussing because we don't. Have, I don't have access. I don't know whether the media also have access to the to the to the law. Okay, there is this need for funding the um, education in Nigeria, especially tertiary institutions, because of what you, uh, f going by what you have been saying, to fund education, to fund education, to fund the uh, tertiary institutions. What really are these very, very crucial problems that if this administration uh, wants to face education, maybe like the first three things that they need to do to put you on a good pedestal? Well, all this is there also the public purview. You can go to any university today. You see students hanging on window and taking lecture. Students sitting on bed floor and taking lecture. You have a laboratory where they use stove as bouncing burner. We don't have that equipment, that environment. You see students living 16 in one room and so forth and so on. So the infrastructure have decayed. The infrastructure is not growing with the rate at which the number of students were admitted is, is, is growing. So that's the, one of the critical problems in the system. And what we challenge this the, from all the government in the past that, look, if you build the university up, you start having students from outside this country are paying tuition fee as compared to Ghana, compared to South Africa. And our students will not be running away from this country. That's one. Two, remuneration of the lecturers. That is also a critical issue. A university is universal. You should have lecturers. Not at this point. Oh, it shouldn't be at this point. That this, well, mm -hmm. it's unfortunate that uh, we've lost the audio. We hope that he will return to uh, talk to us on uh, the issues that are bedeviling the uh, university. Okay, go ahead, sir. We need to have that mixture. We need to have that mixture of staff all over the world. You must pay comparative uh, remuneration to the lecturers, such a way that you can attract people from outside. Let me tell you, in the past six months, we have lost no less than five to ten thousand professors, lecturers from this country who have gone to other countries. Because today, a professor in Nigeria earns less than five hundred dollars a month. Meanwhile, his equivalent is paid between five to ten dollars outside the country a month. So that is it. So there have to be good remuneration for the lecturer, good welfare for the staff. There have to be infrastructure where we can do competitive research that even the industry will come to the university to do their analysis, to do their research, rather than going outside the country. So that the government also can also come to the university to look for solutions. As we demonstrated during the IPPIS and, the, and our UTAS, we demonstrated that. We have to go abroad and pay heavily to companies to, on how we should pay salary. When we can do a better one in this country. And the report from this IPPIS we have paid so much money for in recent times, Padding and what have you, I sure that we were right. That this thing we could have done as a country rather than going outside the country. So these are the infras we need infrastructure upgrade. Upgradement massive. Two, we need a better remuneration for the lecturer. And three, we must stop this so called, what do you call it, proliferation of universities. In one day, you establish 37 universities. The question I asked myself when I heard that who are the lecturers that are going to lecture in those universities? Where are you going to be the professor? Because by NUC, um, by NUC standard, you should have professors, senior lecturers, and lower lecturers for you to have accreditation. So who are going to teach in the 37 universities? When most of our lecturers who are graduated are born, they have left the country. So we have to stop this proliferation of universities. The same thing happened at the state level. So I say now have four, five universities. Well, you cannot fund one. So those are the things that we need to look at, correct, and then we'll move forward and become the general, general of Africa that we call ourselves. So I have a student from Benin, from Togo, from Ghana, from abroad, coming to Nigeria and say, where? That is the way to go. I will not be generating money as you are paying to other country. There used to be this uh, migration to Nigeria to study. In those days, people were coming to University of Ibadan and so many other universities in Nigeria. At what point did, did these tables turn? Where did we get it wrong? that things began to deteriorate up to this level where our people find it easier to run away rather than stay. Because if the laws were there, everything was there in those days and the conditions were good enough for people to come, where did we get it wrong? We got it wrong when we, start, when we started neglecting education. You can check our budgetary system. In the, during the era of Awolowo, in the Southwest, he was given 30% of his budget to education. 
in the earlier part of the military, they were giving between 10 and 15 percent to education. Then it started dropping. Last year it was 3.4.5. 4.5. You can you can check, you can look at the scale. Scale down. When we started giving very little attention to education. And then the infrastructure in UI. In those days, people were coming from Saudi Arabia to attend UCH, University of Ibadan Teaching Hospital. They were coming. Because they have all the facilities, they have the staff. The environment was good. But today, what do you have? People that didn't have headache now, they run abroad. Because we have didn't allow that to grow. The specialist doctors we have there, the real good we have trained with our money, have left. All you have are those who are very patriotic who decide to stay, and the younger ones who are just looking for opportunity to move. The same thing with the academics. So what I'm saying is, let's go back to the old days. I will pray that this government will give at least 15% like other African countries to education, not 4.3. Because education is the key to all the sectors that you have in the country. And now the case you had with the, fed the federal government, uh, the industrial court has ruled that, uh, well, in favor of the federal government, that no work, no pay against ASU. How is ASU you responding to this? You see, you know, my surprise by Nigerian press is that you pick one issue and you are prefer it and leave the rest. If you read that, if you have read that judgment, I can send it to you if you want it. Say that if the employer and the employee agree through negotiation to pay, you can pay. That is what he said very clearly. You can look at it. You also talk about IPPIS being illegal to university. But we don't, the press don't look at that. We are also, we're also very clear that our strike was legal. The judge also said very well that we should not be punished for being on a legal action. So those are the things, but we just pick that. That, that's why so we are we privileged to have you here to give us this Thank information so first time. We need to, we need to, we need to look us, at this. Yeah, so what the more Lord, information, the, the, what next with, from us with regards to this? What we will do, we will meet, we pray the new government to put a team together, we will meet, look at all the issues and settle all the issues out of court in the interest of Nigerian citizens. Okay, sometimes... As, yeah. also, yes, go ahead. As also indicated in the, the judgment by that law, judge. Okay, well, this is a little bit away from that. Sometimes when people talk about the fact that universities or tertiary institutions need to be funded, uh, if you're especially talking from the side of government, uh, they usually say that universities should generate their own income and not go cap in hand to the government and all that. What are the things that are hindering this university? I know you have mentioned it, but for emphasis, what are the things that are m hindering the universities from making so much money that they will be independent? Because right now we do not even understand the level of independence that uh, the university system has. What we have is autonomy. And that autonomy is well defined by the, by the Miscellaneous Act, what it, it is. It is like government will not be out of it. The organ running the university is appointed by the president as visitor, which is government council. Two, the university is already generating money. Let me give you an example. The running cost for Unilag, ABU, UNM, what they get from government as running cost per month is about 15 million. What this university is, third generation university gets from federal government as running cost for running buying diesel, buying generator, all of that, the running cost is just 15 million. Meanwhile, the cost of buying diesel alone in Unilag will not be less than two to 300 million a month. So who can, who can talk for the excess, the, the extra? Mm -hmm. Two, when we were students, when we were school, university built posters, built accommodation, all sorts of things. All those are not there again. So university is already generating a lot of money, but there are a lot of encumbrances from the ministries and bureaucrats. University is forced to pay 20, 25% or big little money they collected from students here and there to federal account. And all the vigilances are under pressure. And they that the university is not a fund generating agency that will remit money to federal account. We do that happen anywhere in the world. So that is the system. The, the cost is already being shared. But we are saying that for the government, try and do your own by giving at least 15% of the budget to education. 
rather than 4.5 percent as you have in 2022. That is that is it. So when it is said that universities, we also say that universities, the, the infrastructure to be developed in such a way that we can attract consultancies, we can attract, we can uh, attract research grant, knowing that you have a good laboratory, have uh, 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 clients from all the ministries and everywhere doing the most the majority for them, using the principle of the triple helix relationship between the government, the university, and the industry. That's what you have in the Asia. That's what they are doing. If you go back have any issue, they take to the universities, you have to provide the problem for the industries. So when we get to that level, this issue of funding will not be an issue. If you can establish the relationship, this triple headless relationship, relationship between the universities, the industries, and the government at the top. So that is what we have been preaching. Let's have this relationship. You don't have to run to anywhere to look for uh, any solution. Go to the university and get your bread grade. And that's what the, the developed country the world are doing. If you have a problem, go to the universities. Now, brain drain. And two. Okay. Go, and, and two, we should ensure that the facility we have there are up to the standard you have in the world. I, 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 I am a soil chemist. And there's something I work on mineral, mineral mineralogy. That is looking at. The type of mineral we have on our soil that will not have problem with our roots and water. I work on it. But any time I'm doing analysis, I go to a lab in South Africa, and I'm charged. We can develop this lab on our own here. There is no that was working in Nigeria until recently. Umaru, Umaru, Musa Yadwa University were able to establish one, but there was no other one in this country that had to go to South Africa to do my analysis. Is that right? Can we have a good appreciation of the level of damage that the brain drain uh, is having on the university system today as we speak? We just cannot sum it together. I can tell you for the academic style, there's no university, standard university you go in the world, you don't see a Nigerian lecturer. There's no country you go today in the world, you don't see a Nigerian lecturer. When I was a student in my department, in a state university, we have lecturers from five different countries teaching in my department. Somebody from Poland, somebody from Sri Lanka, somebody from Senegal, somebody from Ghana, and Nigeria. Teaching in one department. Today, we're even going local. 90% of lecturers in the university is from a state where the university is located. <coughs> See, that's our problem. So, we have lost so much. You know, there was a king, and I will not mention his name. Do you know what I tried? He called me. So, as to president, do you know we are giving more aid to America and Britain that they are giving to us. I say, how is that possible? He said, Emmanuel, let me explain to you that every year we lose our doctor, we have trained with our money, with our environment. We lose them in truth to South Africa, to they leave this country to those countries. Free of charge, if they will pay their effort to go, to go and treat the student, the, the, the patient there, take care of their system. That we lose thousands of lecturers to this Britain and America to go and teach after using our money to train them. And I agree with him. And that's what is happening. But when we rectify our system, most of these are lecturers will come back. The good ones here will be retained. And we can even get foreigners to come and teach in Nigerian universities. And give this universality, universality, universality to our university system. So um, are you comfortable with the level of autonomy that you have? Or what more can be put in place to make sure the autonomy that you are supposed to enjoy uh, will translate to all these things that you're talking about, how you can make your money and, uh, and, and stand on your own and make the government even rely on the university system. Describe your level the of auto autonomy right now. The autonomy is already there. The problem is implementation. But the autonomy law, as well explained by the judge, the Nodosha court uh, president, that, for example, bringing IP to university is illegal. Because the law stated, stated who will pay the salary of academic staff and non-academic staff in the university. It's the government council. But you have got to bring a standard to be paying. And today, as I'm speaking to you, they are going so many of our colleagues, the foreigners who were managing to be here have left. As I'm speaking, the constitutional adjustment of minimum wage, more than 30% of our members have not been paid. Because if you have an issue in Sokoto, you have to fly to Abuja to resolve it. So that is one, too. You also have this incursion. Today, for a vice chancellor to appoint a professor 
the head of service will give approval. Where do you have that? When the law is very clear on how people should be recruited. So today, when you go to the university, the university wants to award a contract to build a, to build a, a toilet. They say you must go to, uh, what do you call it? Uh, federal Board of uh, whatever, to get, a, to, to, to get approval. So is that how universities run? But all that was not captured in the autonomy law, right? The autonomy law is very clear that the, the finances of the university will be managed by the financial finance and uh, general purpose committee of council. That is is there, but it's great. With, with the law have been the, the, the so brutalized that, that uh, the council have become just uh, figureheaded. The council. So you have autonomy, but you do not have financial autonomy. There is financial autonomy. You see, financial autonomy doesn't mean that you have to provide the hundred percent. The National Assembly is, is, is autonomous, is it not? Mm. They don't know their own, is it not? It's not autonomy. Yeah. Where does the money come from? Do they just generate their money? The money comes from the financial account. The judiciary, the, the judiciary is autonomous, is it not? Do they generate their money? The money comes from the federal account because they are federal agencies. Just like the universities are federal agencies with a law that has been signed by the president that you have your autonomy or based on X, Y, Z condition. The university belongs to the federal government, just like the National Assembly belongs to the government, the judiciary belongs to the government, Central Bank belongs to the government, and the uh, former NFP belongs to the government. So we talk about uh, how you generate your funds. It doesn't come away. The law was very clear on how you run the university. Implementing it is a problem. There's no university in the world where you have university generate all their money. When you go to those one, you refer to America, go and look at how much the state generally put in as aid to students, as grant to students, as aid to the universities. So when, we, when you go to other universities, like go to Germany, everything is free. You can check. If an Nigerian get admission in a German university, it will, it will undergo free education in Germany, in Netherlands, in Sweden. No, you have free. In a Nigerian student, they will pay the father, the parents, for putting your son in school. Wow. <laughs> the issues are many. Yeah, well, we now understand why the Jaqua syndrome is, uh, is getting out of hand. Now everybody wants to move because things are working everywhere else. It's, it's such a, a shame. Um, we, we apologize that we had to digress from, from the student loan and now talking about uh, ASU and the university system itself. But it became cannot, inevitable yes, because it's interwoven. Things, yeah, yes. it became inevitable because it is interwoven. So what next is the question? Mm. What so, next? So maybe we'll throw that to you, uh, Professor, in, in closing. Uh, what next, like uh, Maureen has asked? What next is very clear. And for some of us, will have belief in this present leadership, as well as the president. Because you understood where we are on strike, you understood what the issues were. They tried to intervene. Even the president for staff also tried to intervene. So they know the issues. And we believe they also believe in education. So our own idea is that we, we expect us to meet with them, set up a technical committee that will look at all the issues, and for once and for all, restore the dignity of Nigerian university system. Once and for all, stop this so-called jackpot syndrome. Last year, within the first six months in last year, this country paid 600 million euro to Britain as tuition fee. If we put that in this system, we'll solve all the problems. So let's, and I believe this government will do that. They will yes, meet sir. with us, meet with the technical team, and then we'll sit down, look at all the issues one by one as patriotic Nigeria and resolve the issue with Nigeria universities. Not just Nigeria universities. United universities, polytechnic, and college of education. Mm. The primary school are gone. I hope the so governor will, re will revamp them. But we need to revamp these three levels of education at the tertiary level because they are mutually uh, related. It's just unfortunate that um, it's the present chief of staff that brought the bill that has been signed into law about this tuition fee that we're talking about, these uh, student loans that we're talking about, and it has been signed by this president. But it's good that you have so much confidence that they love education. I just seem not to be able to marry the two, that the person who brought this law we're kicking against now is the person that will have solutions to our educational system. I don't know what gave you the confidence. Like I also said, we need to see the real law. Two, if you have people with open mind, even if you have passed a law, you can, you can amend the law. 
Okay. If you have open mind and you are you 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 you, you enacted a law and signed, and you find out there are issues with it, you can amend it. That's why you have national assembly. Mm -hmm. okay. That law was passed by the last regime, ninth assembly. We are in the tenth assembly. Mm. Okay. Um, it was that. Yeah. I think this is where we draw, we will draw the curtain. Yes, thank We'd you like so to thank much, you so professor. much, yeah, professor. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you. Yeah. You too. Uh, well, in case you're just joining us, the program is the breakfast, and we're glad that you're there. But this thing we've been talking about, these are some of the provisions in this law. Uh, uh, we are talking about in this law, in item 14, applicants must have secured admission into any Nigerian tertiary institution or vocational school established by federal government or state government. Applicants' family income must be less than 500,000 naira per annum before you can access this loan. Applicants must provide at least two guarantors, and each guarantor shall be one, a civil servant of at least level 12 in service a lawyer with at least 10 years post-call experience, a judicial officer or a justice of peace. And you can be disqualified uh, if you are proven to have defaulted on a loan given by any organization, uh, found guilty of exam malpractice by any school authority, convicted of any felony or any offense involving dishonesty or fraud. You have been convicted of drug offenses or any of your parents has defaulted on a student or any other loan. These are just some of the provisions of uh, that law. But like Professor Shedeke said, it is possible that these unsigned ones we're seeing in the social media might not just be the authentic one. If ASU gets a copy, we're sure that we also are going to get a certified true copy that will have the signature of whoever should sign it. And then we can talk with more authority. And, and maybe tomorrow, uh, because as uh, the federal government announced last week yeah. the setting up of this interministerial committee. And that ministerial committee is going to be meeting tomorrow on Tuesday. So I imagine that mm -hmm. more light will be yeah. thrown into this. They have been set up to fine tune the student uh, loan bill that was recently signed by President Bola Tinubu. Well, we'll just take a short break and when we return, we'll be going to other issues. Stay with us. Stay with us. <laughs>